Hi. You might have noticed it's gotten a lot colder around here recently. And some of you might have even had snow. So uh, today we're going to be learning about how snowflakes are made and then we're going to make our own paper snowflakes, which you can decorate your school or home. But first, let's learn about how snowflakes are made. Snowflakes are made when water freezes on top of a bit of dust or pollen in the sky to form an ice crystal. As this falls to the ground, water vapour, like that which forms clouds, freezes on top of it to form more ice crystals, building the arms of the snowflake. As the snowflake falls, the moisture and temperature of the air around it changes, causing the ice crystals that form the arms to grow in different shapes and directions. Because the moisture and temperature affects all the arms of the snowflake the same, all the arms grow in the same way. So all the arms of the snowflake end up the same. This makes the snowflake symmetrical. This means one side of the snowflake is exactly the same as the other side. Can you name any shapes or objects that are symmetrical? Are any numbers symmetrical? Are people symmetrical? Take a look at the people around you or look at yourself in the mirror. Are you exactly the same on both sides? Now, let's make our own snowflake and see whether they are symmetrical. So what you're going to do with your piece of paper, it doesn't matter if it's a bit scrunched like mine is, you're going to take one corner and you're going to fold it diagonally down like that so that the edge of the paper meets the edge of the paper at the bottom like that. I'm just going to fold that over. So you should end up with your paper like this, with the corner folded all the way down to the bottom. We're now going to cut off this strip down the side that we don't need with our scissors. So you should end up with a piece of paper folded into a triangle like that. With your long edge at the bottom, so the crease bit at the bottom, you're going to fold from side to side in half. So you should end up with another triangle. Now with the long edge at the top, you're going to take one side of your triangle and fold it inwards and slightly upwards like that. So you end up with one arm pointing up to the sky. And you should end up with the, the fold running down the middle like that. Then with your other arm, you're going to fold it directly across the arm that you've just folded in, like so. So you should end up with what looks like sort of a, a V shape or a Star Trek symbol. And what you're now going to do is we're going to take off these pointy bits at the top that we don't want. Now you can either just cut them straight off in a straight line, but what gives you a nicer snowflake shape is if you cut sort of a V shaped, so a little, little dip down into your paper like this. So what you can now do, you can just start cutting shapes into the side of your paper. Or if you want to draw your shapes on first, just to make sure you're happy with it before you start cutting, you can do that. So if you take a pen or a pencil, you can draw things on. And then if you're not happy with what you've drawn, you can rub it out if you've done it in pencil and, and do something else. So you can do triangles, you can do sort of more rounded shapes. It's entirely up to you what you want to draw. You might find it useful to mark with the X the bits that you will cut out so that you don't get confused as to what you need to be cutting out. And then when you're done, so I've drawn some shapes. I don't know if you can see it onto there. I marked with an X the things that I'm going to cut out. And when you're happy, you just cut them out. Yeah. 
So when you're finished, you can unfold your paper, taking care not to tear it. And with a bit of luck, you will have a beautiful snowflake. We learnt earlier that snowflakes are symmetrical. Can you remember what that means? It means they're exactly the same on both sides of the snowflake. So take a look at the snowflake you've made. Is it symmetrical? Why don't you make lots of snowflakes and you can put them in the window at home or at school so it looks like it's snowing outside like I've done. Another special thing about snowflakes is it's very unlikely you'll find two exactly the same. This is because each snowflake takes a different path from the sky down to the ground. So the moisture and temperatures that each one falls through as it's growing will be different. So each snowflake will grow slightly differently. If you've made several snowflakes, take a look at them. Are any the same? So what have we learned? Snowflakes are made when water freezes on top of a particle in the sky and forms ice crystals. The different conditions around the snowflake as it grows causes the arms of each snowflake to grow differently, so it's unusual for two snowflakes to be the same. All the arms of the snowflake are the same, because the air conditions affects all the arms the same. So who would have a job related to snow? Meteorologists study air conditions and oceans to help us understand and predict the weather. When engineers, designers, architects and material scientists are designing new structures such as houses, boats, planes and wind turbines, they need to know how cold weather, ice and snow might affect these. Biologists and conservationists need to know how snow or cold affects plants and animals they are trying to study or protect. People who work in the tourist industry also need to understand about snow. For example, ski resorts need to be able to predict when snow will fall and make sure the snow is safe for people to ski on. I hope you've enjoyed making your snowflakes. We'd really like to see them if you'd like to share them with us. You can email us a picture to stemclubs at stem.org.uk or if you want to tweet a picture, tag us in at stemclubs using the hashtag stemclubs. If you'd like to do more activities related to weather, check out our extreme elements range of activities on our website.